Hi, this is Dan and welcome to my channel. That's how it all began. Former fashion model and university teacher with a passion for bodybuilding, I soon realized I wanted to make films. I started adding cinematic interest to my bodybuilding videos, taking inspiration from action movies and TV shows. Meanwhile, I watched videos of YouTubers such as Peter McKinnon, Dan Mace, Casey Neistat. I liked their styles so much, so I decided to give it a shot. I started vlogging in the street, at home, on airplanes. Well, pretty much anywhere. I shoot b-rolls making coffee, I fly drones, I talk about cameras, lenses and gear. I need to improve, I need guidance. My wife told me I should try to get in touch with my favorite YouTubers and ask for advice. But who? Then she sent me a video message from Michael, our three-year-old son, saying What's up, bro? So I guess now I know who I should talk to. Okay. Hey Dan. Yo Dan, what's up, bro? Good. How's it going? Well, how's it going? Huh? It's all right. Sure, bro. Yeah, it's such a right now. It's such a difficult time. Yeah. I think like I think globally there's such a, a depressive tone going around, it is. and I think like like. I shaved my head. Yeah, I saw it on Instagram and <laughs> actually my wife and told I, me that I went to friend. see. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm telling you, like, the, Why would the, you do the that? time right now is like, I even, like, I try and project all of this positivity in, in my yes. videos and that's, that's like the hope for, for the way in, in, in how I, I try and make myself feel at uh -huh. most times, but like, to be honest, I'm I'm struggling so much right now. Like, and I, I I'm in a position where I feel I'm so grateful. It's not about it's not about gratitude. It's not about yeah. I can't explain it. It's like I understand the position that I'm in, and I'm so I, I I'm unlike you. I've got Gabs here with me, which you know I'm so happy about, and Joey. Yeah. But it's, at the same time, there's just such a uh, a level of uh, feeling stuck. Unbelievable. I say I want to stop making boring videos, but it's so hard. I always have to imitate someone, you, Casey, Peter. Yes, yes, yes. I want to take inspiration, the techniques. Your storytelling is fantastic with the editing. The Casey totally different, but I love it. And Peter with the style. Yes. I want to be able to master that my own way. It's always that's the the hardest thing is is uh, if you like if you try go off the back end of of somebody else's style, it mm -hmm. may feel safer because it um, you know you can always return to it and reference and yeah. referencing is key. I, I I totally believe you know in how learn mm -hmm. how to steal like an artist. You know yeah. you you can. Take take what you want and and repurpose and put it into your own into your own way. But YouTube should be used for uh, being able to to tell these personal stories. And if you want to make use of who's ever style, I can, mm -hmm. you know, I can guarantee you that that Peter or Casey or or any of of these greats, they've sub referenced and referenced and compiled and and developed their structures based on on, on uh, filmmakers that yes. that uh, they've appreciated, and none of these people would ever sit in an interview and say, you know, I developed that style. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, K Casey would get the uh, the crown for being the the king of, of, of vlogging and really definitely taking that um, cinematic approach mm -hmm. to a daily vlog uh, to yeah. turn it into more of a movie style and. That definitely he he can definitely coin that as being his own. But if you study all of that, all mm -hmm. the shots, it's it was very cleverly structured by him going and referencing from from great film directors and great movies. And I don't think ever be be afraid to to copy mm -hmm. somebody else's style. But then what you got to do is is when when creating the narrative, the story, mm -hmm. 
Bo learned to get rid of, uh, say, a beautiful shot in, in, or, or a great cut, if it doesn't make sense or if it doesn't, um, is, if it's not a vehicle to the arc. You know, you've got, yes. you've got a story, a beginning, a middle, and an end. And, and sometimes, and I, I fall for it a lot, and a lot of filmmakers in this day and age, we go outside, I call it location sickness. Well, I don't call I've, I've also stole that term actually from David Mamet. <laughs> um, but it's uh, when you go, when you come up with an idea, um, sitting in your room and you haven't looked at locations or whatever, and you go outside and you walk around and suddenly you see um, a great abandoned park, but it has mm-hmm. absolutely nothing to do with your idea. Somewhere in your mind, you're going to think, oh my word, I need to include this because it's accessible to me. And that's the same with, with a, a great shot. You've just learned how to do mm-hmm. um, a, a, a zoddy, a, a zoom dolly, you know, like a Hitchcock yes. zoom. And all of a sudden, you're all high on the Hitchcock zoom when in, it doesn't make any sense. So you'll see, you know, I see Peter release a video with um, new camera techniques. And then there's a string of filmmakers that go out and, and tell stories trying to utilize all of this shit yeah. when it doesn't actually make sense where it is. True. And I think if you if you just it's just about the basics, and that's what Peter's great for is mm-hmm. is, is is teaching and, and really learning the the reasons for why you would use certain shots in certain places. Yes. And then you just got to tell. I can tell already you're so passionate and interesting. You've got thousands of stories about stripping and all kinds of things. Really <laughs> like those are incredible stories, and you just need to find a vehicle, which is filmmaking. And now, in a in a um, an artistic filmmaker's right, yes. it's the way that you're going to tell these these stories, um, and that's you know once you do that and you start hitting that mark every single time um, with a similar style, your your YouTube channel will fly. Wow, <laughs> really hope so. Yeah. Really hope so. But when I tried to to tell a story. Maybe I didn't tell it correctly. I didn't do it right. I didn't have many views at all. So I always have to talk about something useful. Like I show you the 10 to 18 millimeters and how it performs in low light. I don't know, something like that. If I don't that's talk really about good. technical it's things. Yeah. It's difficult because that's another discussion of, of you know, the only the only metric that we have to to gauge success of a yes. YouTube video is likes and comments and views. Yes. There should be an, an option of, uh, for like an appreciation of the, the amount of work yeah, and effort. And exactly. You've got you to gotta take what it's like, it's, it's about weighing off, um, you know, your personal life. Yeah. Does it actually make you happy making these videos? Mm-hmm. Um, if it does, you know, I look, I look back and I, I think about videos that maybe haven't got the, the matrix scale that I would uh-huh. love. Um, but the, the process and when, when I sat and I was creating the film, would I have been doing anything else with my time? Uh-huh. You know, no, I wouldn't, I, I would have, I would have still gone back and made the film. Yeah. I would have made it anyway, regardless if it got a million or, or 10,000. And this sounds me telling you this, I wish that I could have this voice in my head at most of the times because I I also am a big victim of getting super bleak with, mm-hmm. I find sometimes the films I try the hardest on get the least amount of views. Like that's just kind of like a Murphy's Law thing <sighs> um, for me. And uh, I, you know, it's, it's, it's about making sure that the filmmaking, the idea of becoming a filmmaker and of just becoming a YouTuber seems great. Mm-hmm. But in all of that, you can get lost with, with um, trying to find the wrong shit. Yeah. Uh, you have to make, ideally, no matter how big the channel grows, no mm-hmm. matter how many people you reach with your videos, if you, this sounds like a cliche, but if you mm-hmm. are not 100% s- stable and happy, Mm-hmm. And you can sustain the videos that you're uploading. You're gonna burn out and become so depressed because it's like, you, in order to affirm yourself, you need the views and the likes yeah. and the comments. But then you, 
in order to get that, you need to try so hard, so yes. fucking hard to make this video all the time. Then you can't get it. And then people are commenting going, where's the, where's the video? And you're going like, oh, you know, oh, shit. <laughs> and all the stuff. And it, it becomes like a chaotic mess. Yes. You know? it, yes. is, it is an insane thing that people on the outside of YouTube, viewers would never be able to understand the psychological um, warfare yeah. that goes on. Yeah, true. You know, before releasing a video, while well, writing a video, while well, creating. Yeah. When did you start exactly? Because you said that in one of the videos, but not in the specific. Like, how did you start for the first time with a camera? Um, I was about 15, 14 or 15 years old, and um, I was very into surfing. Uh -huh. um, and my my parents had a little uh, DV camera uh -huh. that's recorded to DV tapes, and um, I used to. We didn't have a computer or anything back then, so uh -huh. there was a guy down the way that uh, could take the DV tapes and digitize it onto CD, and you would I would sit with him, and he would uh, cut in and out points for uh -huh. certain things. So I, I sort of understood the gist of editing then, and then. I had some some like craving to kind of add a like, intro sequence. Mm -hmm. you, know, you used to watch a lot of surfing videos, and I, I just used to film myself um, from different angles, waking up in the morning and putting the alarm off and going and showering and huh. playing with my dog and running off to the beach. And and then uh, eventually for school, for an oral, uh -huh. you, know, you have to stand in front of the class and, and present a presentation. I was so nervous and shy to ever do that. And uh, so awesome. I asked my teacher if I could make a video instead. And she said, sure, you know, you can make a video. And I was like, wow, this is great. It's a way that I can finally uh, be able to communicate my thoughts without any anxiety or public fear, you know, the fear of having to speak. I found out from an early age that I could uh, utilize filmmaking as an all-encompassing uh, tool of communication for communication so uh, i made my my first few videos like that a school project uh -huh. um you know i was kind of that like uh film geek nerd guy at school that anyone who wanted anything filmed i'd, I'd film it for them I became uh, like a, a film enthusiast yes um, and then i uh, yeah from there it just it was kind of a Everybody always knew it. If, I, if you read in the old school uh, magazines when people write, you know, what are you mm -hmm. going to be doing? This is... Older, it was always, I just always wanted to be a film director from a very young age. And Gosh. It's, it's kind of, then I just stepped into it. It's all I've been doing. Um, it's amazing. Since, yeah. So interesting. I mean, it's awesome you were able to develop that. And how did you get to your technique? It's spectacular, like scrape book, all these compositions, so dynamic, I love it. How do you get there? I think it's also, it's just from um, years of trial and error mm -hmm. and um, definitely referencing. I think every, everything that I've, I've done is, has been referenced off something and then developed. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes things happen. Um, I think ideas come from when you're really busy on an idea and you get stuck mm -hmm. an idea for a new film comes off the back end of, of of trying to find your way out of that one even though that you know you, you should stick and finish this yes thing. very much like uh uh this idea of just trying to run away from from one's problems but you do find a new idea so always keep a little book with me um to write things down and uh -huh. and develop and, and I, I get really excited when I think about something new and that excitement has never gone away. Mm -hmm. you know, that excitement, I think I've, I've now been doing, making films professionally for 12 years now. Um, and I, I, I'm as excited as I was the, the first time that, I, you, know, you know, that feeling when you start to look through the viewfinder and you, you realize mm -hmm. uh, depth of field. Yeah. You sit there and you like, you, you uh, pull focus between the deodorant can and the headphones on your table or whatever it is. And it just seems so 
magical. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think that that feeling never never goes away mm -hmm. because it just get it, it grows into into bigger things. It grows into actually breaking it back down and um, communicating with people. If I for the comments that I enjoy on my videos are, are the ones that when somebody's seen that little nod mm -hmm. in the subtext of the video that I've worked on um, and they appreciate that. You know, one person that I've never met in my life before, that makes me feel really connected and uh, makes it all worth it. Yeah. Well, that, this is awesome. If you were to choose one camera and another piece of gear to use with it and nothing else, what would you pick? Um, I think the 1DX, the 1DX Mark II, the Canon is is for me. I've I've tried all all different yeah. DSLRs. Um, obviously, we've shot and in in the commercial world and directing films, we've shot on all all scale mm -hmm. cameras, all the Aries and and Reds and whatever. Um, but the the most the greatest camera I've owned is the 1DX. It's just so versatile. Um, it's really yeah. heavy, but it's like, it's obviously expensive. I think it's, you know, it's an expensive. 6,000 know, euros, I guess now. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's, it's so great. It just performs. Yeah. You can, if you really have to, you can put it on auto and it will get you a great shot. It, I love, I love that. And, and Rode is obviously with their microphones as have been so incredible just yeah. plug in and and perform yeah i love stuff like that i i, I hate to yeah. have to sit and exactly like one around with, with everything and a piece of gear is just a tripod oh awesome yeah <laughs> yeah okay. tripods are, are the best just the normal flimsy little tripod like this just like a little, like, if it's carbon fiber you know yeah all right. Not, nothing with a fluid head. Uh huh. Just like, if yeah. you're without a tripod, I think like there's been times where I've been without a tripod and you're like balancing juice bottles and bricks and <laughs> twigs and stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Like, yes but yes, you yes. can always do without anything else, but you always need a tripod. I know. You don't always need the this, this smoothest shot. You don't always need a drone to make it work. You can jump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the top of a building or whatever absolutely you know, that's stupid a stupid example but yeah you, you, you uh if there's light you know if you've got light all you need is is it's daylight you need a tripod and a camera and you can absolutely yes the best shots in my opinion are taken with natural lights outside these are the best of course you need just no, a couple no. of reflectors and you're fine Totally. Inside is much more difficult, at least for me. And the 1DX, oh my God, I love it. Especially the mm. 120 frames per second autofocus. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Anything else as advice to any YouTuber, anyone starting a channel with passion? I think. That's it's very difficult <laughs> coming for me because I don't I don't practice what I preach. Um, you you touched on it earlier. I think yeah. that if you you've got to decide what you want out of YouTube. If you want success with the metrics and you want mm -hmm. to do well with views and subscribers, you need to create a channel um, that adds value. Yeah. It's got your films have to be meaningful, but the, the videos themselves down to the core they can't just be stories because you know you can only tell so many true stories you, you, unless you bloody you know a person that's lived a million lifetimes but you're going to eventually get to a point where you're going to run out of stories to tell and and your videos then are, are, would have peaked in the beginning and they're going to absolutely fizzle away but if you if you like um if you like peter or you know casey i guess was in the daily vlogging story mm -hmm. realm which which also obviously works. I don't I don't really know about the daily blogging anymore, mm -hmm. um, and I, I kind of see the the metric of of doing um, three three to four uploads a week being the more favoured. Yeah. Um, right now, but 
yeah, I, I would make I would make films that that add value, something that you know. I wouldn't try and focus on things while you trying to learn. You you teach in your audience on the back end. I feel that you need to be a few steps ahead. Yeah, in, with knowledge, um, and then you just got to keep on hitting those marks. You know, you see it with YouTubers all the time that grow their channels really quickly and and are able to make it. My channel grew as fast as it did because I was on the back end of Casey's channel. I think that. Um, Mm-hmm. As as artistic and creative my films are, they they're not films that speak to um, broad audiences in the way that tutorials do or um, unfortunately videos yeah. that have, have the ability to really have that shareability in them. I think that the more artistic you go, mm-hmm. the less shareability you have. But yeah. for me, I, I made the decision, and I was so lucky to have a person like Casey support me and and other YouTubers that. Have, I've had the spin-off to gain the subscribers and gain viewership. Yes. Um, but I always choose to to stick true to my creativity and I, mm-hmm. I don't have any... Uh, there's nothing linking a film to another film on my <laughs> channel. They, they just... It's, it's the way that I feel. Yeah. It's, um, it's, ex- it's an expression. It's an art form to me. It's very, very dear to my heart. Definitely, yes. Um, and that's my choice, you know. I, I went down that line. I guess I could be another form of YouTuber. I could be mm-hmm. making um, a lot more money if I, if I, if you want to put it like that, or um, doing uh, much bigger numbers. Mm-hmm. But I, for me, this is my my path, and this is what I've chosen to do. So, yeah. and you can't survive doing it my way. It is just it's a lot. It's it's a lot of work. And anyway, I, I really appreciate you spending time with me because I know oh, I keep time, you're yeah, very thanks. busy, you're an awesome person. Stay true to yourself, you know, stay, stay true to what makes you happy. All right, and Great. I'll stay in touch. It's been really nice talking to you, Dan. Perfect, it's been great talking to you too, man. Cheers, bro. Bye-bye.